Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4000 Week Reich as Germany. Let's continue on from where we last left off. So we've conquered all of our eastern territories back. We have banned every single book in existence. Yes, every, every single book has been taken from the uh, German populace. I'm sure that'll have absolutely no repercussions in the future. The Georgian land transfer, the Armenian land transfer... Do we want to do that? I mean, it's free. Well, well, I mean, I have no reason to keep this territory. We do still get to keep Baku, so that means we get decent oil supply. And we also have this territory up here as well that belongs to us. Is there a good resources there? As far as I can tell, the answer is no. So I guess that's just going to stay ours for however long it takes. And I, and I think most of the other stuff, we really just want to save our political power for uh, when we do the alien cultural movement. It's going to cause negative 20 cents, negative 20 percent stability, which I would say is quite bad. But I mean, it, it could be worse. And the Soviets look like they're bringing troops back to uh, this border. So I wonder where they went just for a brief few moments. We do have an extra research slot. We'll use that for upgrading you. Actually, no, we'll have an extra research slot tomorrow. And then we'll go for uh, the Aryan Cultural Movement. Follow that up with an extra research slot, which we're going to go for uh, max speed and reliability. Seems okay. I mean, I would like to invade the Soviets. And actually, what is our ability right now? 25, 35, 45. No, 25, 35, 45, 60... I, mean, I know we have 100%, but I think we actually have more than 100%. It just, of course, stops at 100. Um, Honestly, we have so many research slots, I feel completely okay getting these uh, very expensive techs. And what else do you want us to do? Concentrate. I don't know if I need to um confiscate more wealth. If we're just getting to steal in all those little resources for only 30 days. That really doesn't seem so good. 500 political power right now, which is quite nice, which will allow us to do a bunch of these uh, movements very soon. Because you are the Ministry of Speak. We'll make sure no... We'll cut out everybody's tongue at birth. I think that seems uh, more than acceptable. You don't have... Really? We're missing one support equipment? Where do we occupy? I guess we're occupying the Soviet here, right? Yeah. So why don't we send... Because right now we're civilian oversight... I think local police force is better for us. It reduces a little bit more um, resistance. Because right now, your base value is at 30. You're actually, your target's at zero. So this should get all the way down to nothing very, very soon. So that's nice. There's a full occupation of these territories. I mean, how bad are the supplies? Not great. I'll boost this up. I know we I, I know we don't have any civilian factories for this. We're getting some more airports and some more um construction here done. I mean 50 out of 36 is bad, but I, I mean it could be a lot worse. What do you want us to do? You want us to chemical research. Um I mean effects when removed chem factory. I will take Chem Factory, because I'm sure that's good for us. And what can we actually do here? I haven't actually looked here. Focus on offensive. Decryption goes up. Focus. I mean, you're really a lot of AI modifiers, which really doesn't mean too much. And I'm about to trade stuff also is kind of eh. What about you? Political power gain plus 1.5. Resources, factories. You know what? Consumer goods factories minus 10%. I'll take it. That actually could maybe mean... I still have no, none available, of course. We're actually missing 33 factories that we should be using for trade. Which I currently do not actually have. But one day we'll get there. Through working conditions. Um... 
I mean, we can now do all this other stuff. Mathematical revolution seems okay. Aryan science? Don't know what that means, but we'll go for it. Follow that up with... We can afford... Research speed is 40%. You know, we'll go for that after the Esoteric Germania. I, I think that seems okay. I mean, we are losing a lot of political power. And we're still gaining two per day, which is pr pretty good. But we'll, we'll see what these do. The second Gleeschlag. I have no idea how to say this. News of the SS's takeover and transformation of German political, economic, and social life has finally reached the outside world. But this news is not of policies or actions, but rather a series of government-sponsored outbursts of chaos breaking out across Germany. A second Gleeschlag has been initiated in order to energize the creation of a unified cultural identity, Aryanism. Youth groups organized under local SS leadership have committed massacres, mob lynchings, mutilations, and other various atrocities across cities against supposed dissents. Regulation of the Aryan culture has been introduced, and large-scale cracks have begun on the more culturally independent parts of Germany. Local economies lie in tatters, German society is uh, only more polarized, and human capital is fleeing en masse. I'm sure there'll be no problem. We're at least have 98% stability after taking a 20% stability loss. So I, I feel like we're pretty okay. A Mediterranean Union. Did they all unite under one big country? Maybe. The Mediterranean Union. Dominance of the Mediterranean has long been one of Italy's foreign policy's objectives, and now it seems that it has one step closer to that realization. Not through lower, but not through war, but through diplomacy and economics. With the unstable nature of German hegemony in Europe and the economic difficulties of European nations struggling to trade through Western imposed embargoes, Rome has announced an economic blo block known as the Mediterranean Union between itself and other Mediterranean states. The goal, of the, the goal of the Economic Union, as well as promoting free trade between them, involves general economic cooperation in order to create a bustling uh, Mediterranean economy. Uh, another untold aim is to increase Italian economic power in the region to bring it closer to the dominance that's long sought after Mare Nostrum. Okay, so they've not created one big country, but they have now essentially become the, um, like a European Union. But just with... I mean, who else is part of this? I mean, I think it's just Italy and it's like uh, puppet states here. Does that actually say who's a member? And you get some nice benefits out of it. But of course, you know, with like Spain being communist and, you know, Soviets here, like we still got a lot of work to do. I would say. Now we have two more research slots. Ah, uh, let's also get the APCs to be uh, up to snuff. And we're still, I'm assuming, missing support equipment, but it's really not... Missing one support equipment, it, it don't even bother me with that. It's not, worth, it's not worth my time. Is there anything we can actually get here? Of course, you also use Conspiracy Good Factory, which is not what I want to do. Because we already got horrible, horrible modifiers. Do we be done in 50 days. And for you, we need to do, we need to do both. We need to endorse Paganism and do... Uh, Esoteric Germania. I'm, I'm curious what the Mathematical Revolution and the Aryan Science modifiers are. But I mean, we're looking pretty good. I would say. So like, what are you guys doing? Part of National Surveillance. And the question is, is I think they do... Yeah, they do have some war goals here. The question is, when can you invade us? Because when you win... I mean, if you, there's no way you could win. Okay, there they go. That's how they can do it. And the Russian Republic is still slowly advancing their way towards uh, the Soviets. Finland's proposal. From Helsinki to Germania, the Social Democrats of Finland have reached out to the Reich, seeking mutual beneficial relationship. Attempting to secure their independence in such a turbulent region, Finland wishes to sign a friendly treaty with Germany, making sure that Germany will not attack Finland in any situation. In exchange, Finland offers military access and favorable trade deals. We shall reject that deal. Finland, one day, you and your social democrats will fall under our reign. Also, night land attack getting uh, improved is nice for us. And another uh, remembrance of the beer hall. Esotericism will spread throughout Germany. I have no idea what that means. But I guess we'll find out some, somewhere. Um, I mean, span aluminum plant through you, but we don't have excavation 3. Do I even need aluminum? No, we have 273 aluminum, so I, I don't see why I would ever need any more than that. I mean, the negative 40 cent research speed on this is really bad. I will admit. And what are you wanting us to do? You want us to do more chemical research? 
I think we're fine with chemical research for now. I feel like we've done enough chemical research uh, for the time being. And Eric's physique. The concept, the concept of exploiter and exploited has been throughout history the foundation of all societies. Hierarchy is primordial, and yet every nation has until the creation of the Reich, risen and fallen. The reason for this phenomenon is, like in all other things, a matter of race. States have made the fatal mistake of letting lower races interbreed with lower caste, leading to the interbreeding of lessers with upper caste, and subsequently leads to their demise. Parasite too, such as the Jews, have climbed hierarchies in order to puppet the upper classes and destroy for their benefit. The SS has, set this, has seen this historic tragically and has formed a system to counteract it. The old regime separated race and hierarchy to their downfall. In reality, these two are the exact same. With such knowledge, it is our destiny to master Jorith as well as understand it. The SS requires a true uncorrupted scientific community to research the laws that govern our world. Being as the second Gleishtag is in progress, the time will of deny of the Aryanization of this Jew-tainted field of study. Albert Einstein, a name that haunts the scientific community, uh, the Jew who did nothing but push back progress with the abstract connection between space and time, backed by no evidence, and who is denied fundamental scientific concepts as such as the existence of the luminescent ether. His theories will be eradicated, his existence will be eradicated, Albert Einstein was never a person, just a pen name of international Zionists, each attempt to destroy the Reich. However, despite their fallacies, Jews' physics necessitates further investigation. We cannot combat them, we do not understand their capabilities. On the personal orders of Himmler, Werner Heisleg will be leading research into Jewish physics. Johannes Stark, a venerated Aryan physicist and champion of the Aryan physics movement, has made the head of committee dedicated to preserving and revitalizing of physics. We will never, we will never not eradicate the Jewish spirit. E e e n t equals p r v r d r three. Factory pull was ten percent. Um, a horrible modifier to a research speed. I think at some point we're gonna have negative one hundred percent. Ah, uh, so that seems like a good thing, but we do get more. This also affects nuclear production by fifty percent, which also seems bad. Ah, uh, like really bad if I want to start nuking shit. But I'm sure it's fine, you know. I I'm sure nothing bad. I mean, that was, that was actually the mathematics too. This is the, it's not even the science part. I'm I'm kind of worried to read the science part in case it gets my channel banned or something like that. Um, but for right now, um. I guess we'll research... What do I want to research? Maybe Flamethrowers? Flamethrowers 2? These like they could be a uh, good choice for us right now. I know supplies here are bad. Okay? But let's not worry about it. So we just got you, which is pro plus 10% production. So we're at least counterbalancing the horrible effects we just had a little bit. Do we have any better aircraft? Let's research drop tanks. I don't know what that means, but we'll get it. Because right now, our research surprisingly still has a plus 5% boost. But that's very, very, very quickly going to change once you are finished. I mean, the organization regain a plus 40% is still pretty good. We're going to lose some stability here, but that's okay. Aryan Mathematics. To be ubermensch, it is naturally imbued with the qualities of the ever-expanding wisdom. A powerful and determined inner drive and an intellect unmatched by any other race inhabiting Jorith. The Aryan race is adept at the study and expansion of the mathematical field. It is for these reasons that the Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler has initiated the official incorporation of the Deutsch Mathematic program as an organ of the SS. The movement has been relabeled Aryan Mathematics in order to better coordinate with the second Glacier Tag. A change made by the personal orders of Heinrich Himmler. The claim to Aryan Mathematics, such as Oswald Tickmiller and Ludwig Bierbrock, uh, will be heading the committee and will be given substantial power to reform our nation's education system. Their works concerning Riemann's surface habitation and Holomorphic functions will become uh, necessary readings for all scholars entering the mathematical field. Their achievements will be codified across the universities across Germany, and their progress uh, will forever be known as the accomplishments of the Aryan race. They will also be reforming our nation's mathematical outlook, which up until this point had little interaction with the Reich itself. The goal of this operation is to establishment of the facility realized connection. I think they mixed up their like this is the mathematic event which we got for doing the science. I think they they mixed up the uh, the triggers. Um. Which point has little interaction with Reich itself. The goal of this operation is the establishment of a factually realized connection between the Aryan race and mathematical proficiency, as well as the restructuring of our mathematical community along lines of in institutionalist thought. Such comprehensive reform plans carry with them many responsibilities. Other mathematicians may attempt to cling onto what math was unregulated, and as such, they are obstructing the progress of the Second Glistag. 
Tick Miller and Beerbrock themselves have organized that this field of study has been near absolutely corrupted by internal Zionists attempting to destroy the Reich from within. Such behavior is to be eradicated. We will never not utilize our spatial imaginations. Sure. You know what, dude? Whatever you say. I have no idea. I have, I'm reading these, like, these text events. I have no fucking clue what they're trying to say. It's just all nonsense throughout. Like, what? What are, what are you talking about? The words you say make no sense. I, I have 5 million manpower. I don't need more manpower right now. Um, Like, we should be fine. For manpower, basically forever. I don't think we need this. We, we've already constructed chemical weapons. I, I don't know if we need any more. But in six more days, we'll embrace paganism. So that seems cool. Then we'll do Germany's future, and then of course we're going to go for the Aryan Empire. Just because it, it sounds very strange. Um, so we're gonna, of course we're going to go do this and this. We, we have the political power to do so. When do we attack anybody else? I'm not too sure, honestly. Maybe, he, no, not here. And I, don't I don't actually know if we get any more uh, Costas Bellies so far. The bloodiest eagle. I hear I request to change in post. The conditions in this university have become absolutely unbearable. The speckled bastard was, uh, has put in place several mandatory courses, all of which completely obstruct the planned schedule. We are now required to learn about how the world was created through three brothers killing their grandpa and how they turned their flesh into the soil and his blood into the ocean and his skull into the sky. They make us read fairy tales like the Heilic or the Poetic Edda or even so-called magical spells like the Merzberg Incarnations. We're not learning about that useless interval. We're forced to work games to find hidden archaeological objects. Uh, the worst exercise is when they drag us out to some random marsh to extol the benefits of connecting with the primal energies of our Aryan ancestors, only for half the class to get sick after they walk barefooted for hours through the bogs. Some of these, some of those meatheads to be SS officers even go on their own, albeit just to have some drunken swamp parties. That I can handle, though. Those courses are not the problem. The problem is that they're doing, what they're doing is beyond academia. First, it was just uh, little dolls, then it was small animals, but a couple of nights ago, they dragged the kid out there. Rumor has it that they threw the kid into the muck and beat him down whenever he tried to get out. What's worse, it's not even safe uh, to be on the streets anymore. We have to limit operations. Church is being forced to hold due worship ceremonies and have to accommodate new traditional altars. Youth groups led by local SS Boy Scout captains are on a power trip, openly beating anybody who hasn't seen the way. Anybody who's still reasonable uh, are all being sent to their local Wieselberg. They've constructed these castles everywhere, cult-like sites where they are. They drag you there and they redacted until they redacted. All they leave behind are mutilated corpses, each with Germanic rooms carved into them. Apparently it's some sort of ritual going under the label of the sacrificial redacted. For these reasons, I beg they place anywhere else. The painted sky should tell you everything. I, I, what are you talking about? But either way, by the end of this episode, um... Himmler is going to be Emperor. I, I I don't know what that really means. Maybe that's going to actually change our focus tree a little bit. Potentially. I mean, the Russian Republic and the USSR are very, very close to bordering each other. And we'll, we'll see if anybody ends up attacking Mongolia. I mean, they are communists. So I wouldn't be surprised if China or the Russians actually decides to do some sort of uh, push there. 500 political power. I mean, is there anybody here who decreases... I mean, most of you don't seem good. So I'm not... Apparently we can just uh, elect the emergency council? I don't even know what that means, honestly. We don't want to get any of these guys because they cost even more uh, civilian factories, which I, I just don't have at all. Like, civilian factories, they're, they're a dream of the past. You know, we're never going to be able to accurately or um, effectively use our, our economy at all. And I don't know when that'll change. Opening of Gotland International. The construction of Gotland International Airport is yet another example of German engineering at its extreme. Gotland has constructed one of the biggest airports in Europe using thousands of manpower uh, to accomplish the task. This airport seeks to handle all of Gotland's future needs for air transportation, and Reinhard Heydrich has declared the airport a pearl of Germans on the coast of Black Sea. Did I not murder Heydrich? 
The actual cost of the airport is unknown. Some estimate claim that Gotland has used millions of Reich's marks while sacrificing hundreds of German workers in the process. I... I murdered Heinrich. I, I, yeah, I shot him in, the, in like, the face. So I'm not too sure how he opened an airport. I guess we've resurrected him from the grave is my best guess. Also, I do see how you guys have a lot of uh, resistance problems in the south. You should probably want to deal with that at some point. I don't even know if you, do you even have any army. You have no troops. Do you have manpower? No. So I, I don't think these guys are going to be pr uh, providing too much in terms of... Uh, Military conquest in the future, I'll tell you that much. We have 10 more days. Get the game here. Because, yeah, you're just industry stuff. Which is nice, but it, it doesn't allow me to invade more people, which is kind of what I want to do. Oh, can I, can I not choose this one? That's disappointing. The future of the Reich. The future of the German people is on a thin line. The administration must distinguish itself from the failures of the old, ushering a nation into a new chapter of history. This process is not only one of mere changing a name or flag, it is a change of national character as a whole, as this phase symbolizes the dawn of a new beginning for the Aryan race. I really wanted... you to fire... But I, I don't know how you do that. I'm actually going to save it here because I'm curious to see what it actually looks like when that event fires. Um, we'll save. And we'll, we'll, just, we'll, we'll save. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it fire. Just because I'm curious. Focus dot auto complete. Focus dot... We're, we're not going to keep this on. We're, we're, we are going to do the other one. But I'm, ju I'm just curious to see what it looks like. It'll be 91 days. I just want to see. I just want to see. I just want to see. It doesn't actually have a thing here, so it might never actually work. The SS has always been a mysterious, historic, and deeply evil organization, even by Nazi standards. But uh, even those who knew of his insanity can sincerely believe announcement coming from Germany. In a bizarre speech relayed by German newspapers and radio, Heinrich Himmler, leader of the SS, clad not his usual black SS uniform, but altogether a more bizarre ancient-looking outfit, declared the foundation of a greater Aryan Empire with himself as the first emperor. Despite his totalitarian powers, some question whether the rest of the SS can continue to support his seemingly worse... Yeah, I mean... It's different, for sure, but I guess we'll just uh, load back in the save game. And we'll, we'll do the um, the actual decision they want us to do. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a, a weird turn of events, I would say. So you shall be loaded in mere moments. So we're just going to finish the actual decision. And we'll, we'll kind of see if it unlocks anything new. Like, did these ever finish? We finished in five days. We'll kind of see how those play out as well. So 56 days until you are ready. Did the, um... Did the Free French ever decide to invade anybody? No, we, we don't really know what they're doing. And also, we have two giant events here. The Song of Sagria La. It, is this the thing that was in, um, like, Uncharted 2? I think so. I think this is where they went. There was a fisherman toiling away down in the soil to keep starvation away for the day. One day while collecting water for himself, he sailed down the river. He took the river, and the river took him across the forest and through the lands of pillars, reaching far into the sky. It passed overhead, a gorge of absolute serenity, before entering the highlands. After days of working against the flowing waters, he reached his peace. The river brought him into a uh, cavern where he had disembarked and made his way to the valley of blooming peach trees. And people were unconcerned with the troubles of China, and even though that he still had to work to survive, it was his paradise. So, this was a hellhole, Corporal Caldwell thought. It would be medieval, if not for the guns of the hunters. He looked upon the desolate village in Upper Tibet, locked within the Kulan Mountains on all sides. It was a perfect location, no one would be able to hear the operation. He took over for Bruno Beggar, the man who... Uh, the man from the Anurabe. He had also been to Tibet Peterson in 1939, and so he was the guide. He was also had some proven skills that would be necessary for the completion of the operation. Beggar's last mission to Tibet had been for multiple reasons, from proving uh, Weichler to finding plant materials for Liebenstrom to satisfying Himmler's interest in Asian mysticism. This time around, they had one goal, which they would complete to, with efficiency and in secretly. Himmler was forming an anthropog museum, for research into radical si uh, for into racial science, and he needed artifacts. Corporal Kelwit and his men descended the mountain pass, and night began. The village hugged a small lake, and Kelwit peered over 
uh, with his binoculars. He felt a strange sensation. He almost felt some semblance of peace. Quickly regaining control of himself, he commenced the operation. Count was saved by the water sides in the distance. The crackling of fire of uh, rifles and the screaming of families could be heard. Beggar walked up behind Kelfit, whispering, We weren't supposed to use guns. The skeletons will be damaged now. Whoever responded, If that's the case, we'll have to go to another village. That addictingly tranquilly eating him up inside. We get there, you will understand. An odd encounter. The truth shall set us free. That's not a little bit uh, worrying. The journey to Agarthia. A series of research vessels crashing through the icy waters of the Norwegian Sea navigate their way towards Valabard. In the warmer, secured cabins sit researchers and scientists poring over the maps of Jurith hollowed out books such as the goddess of Abthar and Samosia. In the halls facing the burnt, inhospitable climate of supposed Untermet, rescued from an ex uh, execution for their purpose much worse and much more painful. They are naked, crammed, and chained together, and treated as less than subhuman. By landfall, a third were dead or gravely ill. Those were thrown out and left to die. Uh, the sight of Salabar was magnificent and not terrifying. Lights of the Oro Borealis jumped around the sky, green and purple. The horizon was crowded, taken up by jagged black mountains, which penetrated high into the air. Researchers uh, set themselves up in the shadow of the massive, forcing the Unser Mess to construct a circle of wooden cabins in the frigid weather. Uh, despite the climate, the researchers and their SS escorts uh, forced the Unsermets onto nearby tundra and began a great digging. Given flimsy tools and prisoner outfits, the Unsermets were told to dig into the earth and never stop. Quickly, hypothermia, frostbite, and exhaustion took their toll. The researchers transformed the cabins into barracks, containing nothing, which they had hoped would alleviate their problems. It didn't. But even though the Unsermets were dying at overwhelming rates, the digging went on past the snow, past the soil, into the rocks. They were prepared to sacrifice as many Unsermets as necessary in order to reach their goal. Yes, as escorts followed the organizational doctrine, beating down anyone who refused to work, dragging them out into the sea, and leaving them to die if they couldn't get back. No matter how much blood was spilled, the operation continued. Once circumstances proved futile, the researchers in the SS took their belongings and abandoned Svalbard. The Unsermets were left to die in polar blizzards. We lose three manpower, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and, and those other decisions that we just got seems like they could be foreboding. But I think that at least for right now, it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks so much for watching. My name is Anthony. If you enjoyed, give a thumbs up. Now do a thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.